considering this is a part one of three, this is not at all what I expected from Crisis on Infinite Earths as an adaptation. And that's a good thing. Right off the bat, I spent a lot of this really conflicted and confused by the direction they were going. The first half seems to focus entirely on a separate storyline, weirdly uniting the League in a way that seems a bit off. It jumps around a lot with what feels like no connection and this can be pretty jarring. But it's partially meant to be because we're experiencing time and universes like The Flash does as he does, which is non-linearly. Non-linearly. That's a tough one. Then the latter half gets into the crisis stuff where it picks up tremendously. And then, slowly but surely, all those other seemingly random threads begin coming together, really giving this breadth and scale and scope to this story. And when it finally hits what's happening, how it connects to what came from before, how it'll affect the future, it hits hard. As a longtime fan of all the DC animated original movies, the interconnected DC AMU, and now the Tomorrowverse, it really rewarded paying attention and knowing the history of these films. It doesn't lean hard into fan service at all, instead using cameos as a way to inform character progression and introspection. And boy was I surprised at just how character focused this one is compared to sole action packed entries from before, which there's nothing wrong with those, I was just surprised. I teared up multiple times, my mouth was left open by the massive cliffhanger, but yet it also feels like a finished movie with a tease of more coming from the tragedy. I think that's really special as a lot of these types of split movies just get cut off at a dramatic story point and there's more than that here. Kind of reminds me of a certain split movie event from like 2018. No spoilers. I'm still not a fan of the overall art style of the Tomorrowverse. The heavily outlined look and flat movement of the characters in the animation just isn't for me as it reminds me more of a comedy animation like Archer, not that there's anything wrong with that, than a comic book in motion for this story. Still, it's probably the best that's ever been here, even looking better than I'd expect it to, and I actually forgot about it for a little while. So that's a compliment to the strength of the story, and there's a great voice cast, but with other universes coming into play, it's not just the same ones doing every version of every character, which seemingly it won't be because Kevin Conroy has now been confirmed to have recorded lines for part three of this. And I hope it's a chance to say goodbye to his Batman uh, in a way we had, didn't really get to do. And I'm excited to be able to talk about that when it comes. I am really, really, really happy with the direction they took this. While it's not always executed in a way that makes sense and it asks more questions than it answers, sometimes bordering on convoluted. I mean, have you read the source material? It succeeds in delivering something emotional, heartfelt, and also grand in consequence. It's incredibly ambitious, even when it is admittedly hard to follow, but it knows it can lean on sequels to answer things that this film wasn't ready to do, for better or worse, and it's not concerned with explaining itself at every corner. It lets you try to understand it on your own merit. I can't wait to see what happens next, and hopefully there's some fun pulls from other worlds that this one was a little too calm about. But based on what we know about Kevin Conroy, I think there will be. Bring in the DCAU or something. I give Justice League Crisis on Infinite Earths Part 1 four out of five stars and that was a mouthful some of these titles lately have been really long thanks so much for watching hit that like button please subscribe and remember always look for the good